Good morning. I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light. I'm um, working on one of their courses about a course. In, um, these courses are based on A Course in Miracles. And um, in this particular one, it had us reading from chapter eight, section four. And this is what, um, this is the passage that stood out to me. It says the whole power of God's son lies in all of us, but not in any of us alone. God would not have us be alone because he does not will to be alone. <clears throat> so uh, the course asked that we share an example of how this uh, can work in our lives. And so I told a story that had happened to me a few years ago. And I, wanna, I want to share that story uh, with you this morning. So I had the perfect symbol of thinking that I am alone. I had a problem with the air conditioning ducts in my attic. They were damaged. And a little at a time, the condensation leaked into the ceiling and it became waterlogged. One weekend, it finally fell down. The whole ceiling <laughs> in this room where I'm sitting. I was okay with it. I wasn't sure how to go about getting it fixed. And the timing was, uh, as far as money goes, wasn't good since I had a workshop to attend the next week. But even so, I wasn't worried about it. I figured it would all work out, and it did, perfectly, actually. But here's something interesting that happened. I discovered I had a hidden fear. And that fear is that I am alone and on my own. This is a fear that arose from the tiny mad idea that I am abandoned by God and on my own and not doing that well. I was unaware of this fear at first. And here is how it was uncovered for me. The first clue came after the ceiling fell, but before the repairs began. I got a call from a student who had a lot of things happen at once and was feeling alone in her life. She was aware that the ego mind wanted someone to be with her and help her. We looked at these thoughts together and then looked at alternatives. Then we looked at processes. And when the call was over, she felt better. The second clue came as I did my rules for decision plan for the day. In the middle of doing it, I felt something trying to come up. I felt like I was going to cry, but I had no idea why. I decided I would just open my heart to whatever needed to be seen and go from there. So the next piece of the puzzle showed up as a phone call from my son. I was telling him about the situation and I mentioned that his sister helped me with part of it that I couldn't do. He suggested that I be careful about claiming that I'm too old to do certain things. He said that while this was sometimes true, it's not something I want to make a habit of claiming. He also suggested that I start exercising to get more strength and maybe do yoga. I felt, I felt a lump in my throat and it was all I could do not to cry. I thanked him for his help and told him he was right. When he hung up, I sat there and cried, not knowing why it was happening. I asked the Holy Spirit what was going on, what I needed to know. Then the pieces came together and I saw that like my student, I had a fear of being on my own. This situation gave me the chance to look at that fear, but I didn't see it at first. I was hiding it from myself. Now that I agree, agreed to look at it, what I needed to do showed up. I had to take this back to the Holy Spirit three times. Another student told me about a Muji video she watched. He was talking about letting go of thoughts. He used an analogy from his own early life. He was cleaning out his closet, going through clothes. 
When he was through sorting them, he took a pile to a store for used clothes. Later, he began to second guess himself and even went into the store to look at the clothes he had given them. At one point, he bought back a couple of the shirts. And I had to laugh at this. That is how it was with my thoughts of being alone. I gave them away. And then I worry I made a mistake and will need them again. So I bought them back. But at what cost? It cost me my peace of mind. It caused me my identity as a son of God. It's crazy. I did succeed, though, in leaving them with the Holy Spirit because I wanted to. So just a little story <laughs> of how I am learning to practice what A Course in Miracles teaches us. It doesn't do us any good to learn this stuff if we don't practice it. So I thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. And I will talk to you again very soon.